Welcome to Backyard Philosophy, a podcast where a couple friends grab some cold ones, sit around the fire, and talk about science, philosophy, and history. Crack one open, sit back, and get a good laugh as we discuss everything from automation to why the meaning of life is 42. Today we're going to talk about a topic nobody expects. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! And Mike, how are you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing fantastic. I'm joined with my good buddy Nick for the first time in person recording. I am excited! And I got some Old Forester. And that's right, Nick. Something no one ever expects. The Spanish Inquisition. How about you, Nick? What are you, how are you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing good. I'm in Tejas and drinking some Shinerbach. Because when in Rome. <laughs> well, we're going to transfer you from Rome to Spain. And to set the stage, we're about the late 1400s, 1470s. The height, which we actually really started, is 1478. And Nick, you got about the same dates? Yep, that's generally kind of what I got. The lead-up started a lot before that, and it some died out later. Inquisitions wasn't just a Spanish thing. The Spanish Inquisition we're going to talk about today obviously was, but... The Jews had been inquisitioned all over Europe way earlier in like uh, a lot of other countries first. Yeah, we're coming right out of the medieval ages into the Renaissance area and onto the colonial area with the Spanish Inquisition. So unfortunately in history, Jews have always gotten the short stick and for the Spanish Inquisition, boy, did they get a short stick. So yeah. begs the question, how did the Spanish Inquisition start? Well, kind of started with, well, in my opinion, two assholes the monarchy of Spain, Queen Elizabeth, and at this time, kind of a traveler, kind of explorer, a Alonso de Hoedo. Alonso de Hoedo, a Dominican from Seville, pretty much was the Rasputin version for Spain. He literally was whispering dark, evil things into Queen Elizabeth's ear. It was is directly Rasputin related. And he, Alonso was telling Queen Elizabeth, hey, you're having a lot of problems in your country. Blame the Jews. And Queen Elizabeth, a severe strong Catholic monarchy was already kind of looking for a way to make her country more Christian, so to speak. And I think it's important to background, like Nick said, this started way before Spain and the lower southern half of Europe was mainly Muslim. Almost all Europe converted to Muslim at one point, but so Spain's still a hot graph of mix of different religions and cultures. So it's not the Spain we think of now and today. And before this, the bubonic plague was going around the black death the bubonic plague B blue i totally f messed that one up <laughs> yes you're messing up words before i do anyway um the jewish population wasn't hit as hard because they're generally cleaner part of their religious duties involved cleaning your hands after a meal after you use the bathroom and bathing catholics would go months without bathing and so they're generally more unhealthy germ wise so they tended to be more susceptible whereas jewish people really didn't get hit as hard so people really distrusted them for that because they you know they don't know why they don't know just because they wash their hands that you don't get as much germs but they were thought now these people are probably evil yeah you know that witchcraft of staying clean and hygiene that's uh that's some dark witchcraft there nick but it unfortunately being kind of uneducated uneducated at the time it that kind of mindset went throughout the entire country quite quickly uh, many of the officials and, I guess you would say, nobles slash monarchs and governors of Spain already were kind of looking for scapegoats because, well, they didn't want to get blamed. So once Alonso told Queen Elizabeth, like, hey, blame the Jews, Queen Elizabeth asked her officials. And all the officials were like, yeah, it's the Jews' fault. It's definitely not our fault for not having sanitation or we just got out of a plague and our economics aren't doing great. No, nah, we're just going to we're just gonna blame the poor Jews. Yeah, and this is a, a trend that's repeated itself through history. They really got a bad rap. But as we go on, it started with the Jews, but it quickly spread to almost everybody suffered from the Inquisition. Oh, yeah, we're definitely getting into that. But I don't want to jump into that too far because I want to drop some names that the officials might be recognizable from such movies as History of the World with Mel Brooks and the Spanish Inquisition and Mighty Python. One of those names being, again, my Spanish isn't the best, so I apologize, Servion Dominican Thomas de Torquemada. And he was kind of the head honcho, the figure figure for the Spanish Inquisition. Of course, to include Pedro Gonzalez de Manzara, 
Archbishop of Seville, and, well, Pope Sixus. He eventually got involved. First he helped it, and then he tried to ban it, but you know it's a bad bad situation when the Pope is trying to is trying to not convert Jews into Christians. Yeah, and that what I thought was really interesting is depending on what source you're reading, some people are like, this is all the Pope's fault, all the church's fault, and other people are like, no, no, the church didn't have anything to do with it. So obviously they it the Spanish did get carried away. The Pope Sixtus did issue a decree that they could carry out the Inquisition, but he was supposed to be only three inquisitors and they weren't really supposed to kill people. Yeah, uh it quickly turned into like they gave him a they gave him an inch and they took a mile. God, uh, it, when you know, like I said mentioned, it's when the pope goes, "All right, you're going too far with this Christianity thing." And it's Pope Sixes. He doesn't have a great history record. And he's going, "You're going too far, you're too extreme." That's how extreme you actually are. It's like uh Will Ferrell and the other guys, Pope Sixes comes in as Mark Wahlberg. And then Will Ferrell of Spain comes in and just starts throwing the guy around. He's like, I thought we were doing bad cop, bad cop. I saw how hard you were going. I had to do up that. <laughs> Spain was quickly, quickly to follow up by one up himself constantly. And, well, we get into the Inquisition. 1478, the first two Inquisitors, Miguel de Morillo and Juan de Sanorín, which were eventually announced a few years later, but those were the two guys hunting for Jews. And I think we should talk about what an Inquisitor is. Yeah, so, well, first off, I want to say, when you read about all these guys, it's like so-and-so from so-and-so who's actually part of this family, and I'm really glad we're done with the whole monarch thing. So just, once again... Glad to not be living under a king and queen. Democracy. <laughs> Strange women lying in lakes distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be fun for me to be King Arthur. But, of course, it would not be fun for everyone else for me to be king. But, nonetheless. No, an inquisitor is pretty much a judge, jury, and executioner, in my opinion. They were seeking Jews. And, Nick, you know a little bit more about how they started with the Jews of different types of Jews. So why are you in this? So before this all came out, the fun fact is the Spanish Inquisition, it wasn't that unexpected because like Jews have seen this for a while. Like we said, they've but Nick, already been kicked out of everywhere else. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> and their writing was kind of on the wall. This might be us looking back at history of the decrees, but the state asked it to the, they asked the Jews to leave or be converted and they gave them 30 days. Like, and which, you know, isn't a lot of time to get all your stuff and move. They did, I don't know if you would say ask or demand that they leave all their gold behind, but either way, they didn't want them to leave their, take their money out of the state. And this was, even this is the start of it because all of a sudden you have a bunch of people who want to get out of Spain. It's not like airline flights. You're getting on a boat, it takes a while. You can't just suddenly get the entire Jewish population out. And these Jews, some of them, they, they would get on the boat. The people who own the boat would kill the Jews, throw them overboard, come back into port, pick up more Jews, do the same thing, just keep all their stuff, uh, which is obviously terrible. There's no, this, I'm going to preface this so we don't have to keep saying this is obviously terrible. This is not going to be a happy story. This is one of the most fucked things in history. You're, not, you're talking about torturing and burning people alive? Isn't that fun, Nick? So... It started with the obvious Jews, and they were given the option to convert. If they converted to Christianity, they could become Christians. They wouldn't be targeted at, at the beginning. So once all the people who didn't want to renounce their religion were gone or inquisit inquisitored, killed, put in prison, m tortured, then they started seeing, okay, there's these Jews who converted to Christianity. And before that, Jews couldn't hold certain offices, couldn't do certain things, couldn't hold... They were kind of basically farmers, like, who didn't own any land. They weren't allowed to own land or hold office. But now, all of a sudden, when they convert to Catholicism, they can hold office. And they all started rising through the ranks. And all these people who were previously Catholics were like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck? Those guys, th I think they're Jewish. <laughs> they took my job! <laughs> exactly, they took their damn... <laughs> Yeah, but to add some numbers to what you said where, like, the giant exodus out of Spain. On March 31st, 1492, 160,000 Jews all left to, well, mainly Portugal and Italy, which will be very important later on in the podcast. But, yeah, when Jews started getting blamed for all the problems, they had some auto-defase. And that's what we were talking about dark. 
an auto de fe, for those who don't know, is pretty much a festival where everyone gets drunk and watches people get burned alive. Kind of carnivalish. And the first one was February 6, 1481, where six people were burned alive. And those festivals and celebrations for burning people of heresy, because like Nick said, it started with the more Orthodox Jews, the more classic hard faith Jews and then it kind of transferred to all Jews and then they were just doing everyone for heresy and then Nick they kind of started running out of Jews yeah so one of my one of the stories I enjoyed was uh strange terms of words but you know so the, this guy built this giant I don't know what you would call like mass burial like where you would light all the prisoners the Jews on fire he so he built it you had in the four corners you had like all the religious figures. And then the next, like soon after, he was thought to be a conversa, or he was thought to be a Jew. And then he got burned after spending all this time building the exact thing that people were burning people on. He got caught up in it, which is going to happen a lot. You were going to hear a lot of people who did something to further the Inquisition, who then themselves got Inquisitioned, which is karma, but doesn't really stop anything. <laughs> For those who do not realize the irony, it's like an SS officer for executing Jews that himself get executed for being a Jew. That's it's like that's like the first. The Spanish the Spanish were the first kind of mass extermination in Europe. And boy, it got kind of darker. So in fifteen oh two. So Well been... also I wanna say, so like you said, talking about a festival, like yeah, people would go to this and they'd read out the verdicts in front of everyone. They did it in mass because they were killing so many people, they didn't have enough time to kill them individually. Just think about that. But they did it in mass and people would come out. And if you didn't come and watch, it's kind of suspicious. It's like, what? The, you might be the Jew. So you, everyone was f pretty much forced to come and watch. Otherwise, they could be you'd be there next. One of my st favorite stories that I saw about Auto de Fe, I don't know if it's true. The source that I got wasn't the best. Again, you can check out our sources on our YouTube page. But our, there was people getting burned alive and there was heresy being committed at the heresy convention so then they would just add more people like people were having sex at the auto de phase they're like well that's adultery not getting burned alive and that just kept the cycle going which that a carnival of death where you're having fun just sounds it's like being happy at a book burning it's just so foreign and weird to me and yeah i we it just kept going the pile kept getting higher and higher in 1502 once majority of the jews were being tortured by extreme means they switched to muslims like i mentioned a lot of southern europe were muslim based and parts of spain and then eventually most of spain and i believe all of spain eventually banned islam for quite a long time actually so all those muslims now had to leave again they ended up going to north coast africa like portugal or Traveling more down to Italy, which again will be very interesting down the line. Yeah, another thing I want to bring up, kind of still at the beginning of the Inquisition, is how the rabbis, a lot of them very quickly turned, became Catholics, and then would sell out the other people of the Jewish, their other, I don't know, what, like flock. What do you call? What do you call their, their their flock? Yeah, like a lot of they the were a wolf and sheep clothing. Yeah, oh no, sheep and wolf clothing to survive, and so you really couldn't trust anybody. Like if you were Jewish, even like, like one, I forget exactly his name, but a high up rabbi turned and then started selling people out to save himself. And then uh, obviously the same thing. He also got inquisited later on just because pretty much no one was safe. So I guess in that aspect, nobody does expect the Spanish Inquisition. Everyone expects they're not going to get inquisitioned. Man, I did not know the rabbis were selling out that fast. I mean, talk about like a leader in your community and all of a sudden turning on you. God. I can imagine also family members turning on each other to save their own skin. It's that was a do or die. God, I, I didn't. I didn't even know about the rabbis turning like that. Well, we'll get further on when we get more into the torture, talking about families turning on themselves. Yeah. Uh, so once the Jews were kind of thinned and the Muslims were kind of thinned, they needed more people to blame. And boy, did the I mean the torture turned medieval. It's kind of medieval time. It. They were trying to get anyone to convert, anyone to point fingers. They were doing anything they can do. And Nick, they did some really dark stuff. Yeah. So, like you said, after all the 
Jews are gone, then you have the then they targeted the conversos, people who recently converted. And then they went after and the crypto Jews, the people who were suspected of being Jewish, this is essentially McCarthyism at this point. Um so it was like nobody was safe, like we said. It, you didn't really have to be Jewish. So before we get into torture, I want to talk about things that people would use to think that you were Jewish. If you if your house didn't have smoke on Sundays, you're Jewish. So how does that logic work? It's a day of rest. You ah. don't you don't burn fire. You don't bowl on Shabbos. Okay. Again, if they're not bowling on Sunday, probably Jewish. Um, also, if you bought if you didn't eat pork. Spain, big pork country. Muslims, Jews don't eat pork. If you didn't buy any pork, well, that's pretty Jewish of you. Inquisitioned. If you bought a lot of vegetables for Passover when you can't eat meat, probably going to get inquisitioned. If you're not circumcised, you're probably a <laughs> Jew. They, if I'm not mistaken, they were going around uh, checking people's uh, nether regions. Yeah, being naked was a big part of the Inquisition. <laughs> yeah, as much as they're trying to find heresy, it's amazing how much uh, being nude was involved in the Spanish Inquisition. And since before we get into torture, I want to mention a lot of people to avoid being tortured or forcing to leave their homes would quote unquote convert and they would say they're Christian but practice their faith in, in private and be kind of hidden about it. And when those people were found out, that was really bad because they lied about converting to Christian and they were Jewish, so it just did not turn out well for them. Yeah, that was the the conversos. That's what that meant. I, we didn't really explain that. Yeah, the people who had converted, because in the first wave, like we said, people get wiped out or convert. Well, we don't trust those. We feel like they're only converted because if they didn't convert, we'd kill them, which is, yeah, I mean, that's probably probably pretty true. We don't, we don't trust you that you converted, so we're going to kill you anyway. <laughs> That makes complete logical sense. So, in the so we're going to talk about a little bit the torture now. So, people equate Spanish Inquisition with torture, which is completely accurate. Bring out the comfy chair. <laughs> and uh, the thing that I was surprised that so say all right, we'll talk about the torture and then, but just re re think about the torture isn't the punishment. The torture is just a fact finding, and then after you confess, after you have been tortured and just say whatever you, they want, then you get punished. So it's not the end. You're just kind of spinning up the process. That's all you're doing. It's the same results at the end, but it's, it's the same process. And the tortures were dark imagination gone wild. I mean, they were doing everything from stretching people's limbs so they ripped off, hot pokers, things to people's nether regions, which, boy, that mind just swelled up inside my body just thinking about it. And... I, are you are you talking about the Judas chair, Mike? Oh God, Nick, why don't you explain to people what the Judas chair is? Okay, so like we said, there's a surprising amount of nudity in the Spanish Inquisition. That the humiliation of being nude is one of the big. I don't know the inquisitors. The inquisitors were really into it. So the Judas chair. That's a little. That's a little. Sus that's a little uh, suspect. If you don't. If you don't mind me saying. That is a little suspect. So the Judas chair is essentially a triangle, like a pyramid. Imagine a pyramid, and then the person sits on it completely naked with the tip going up their anus, and as time goes on, weight gets added to the person's feet so that it gets shoved further up and splits. Nick, isn't that just your Saturday nights? Uh, no. It's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> no, we make, we make jokes of this dark humor, but imagine quite literally being split in half slowly over time. That is, I don't want to imagine that. I'll be honest with you. I don't even want to imagine that. And one of the, the most common one is probably the strapado. And what that is, is the person's hands would be tied behind their back, like a normal, like someone getting arrested or something. And then a rope goes around their hands and that's lifted them up off the ground. So your arms are rotated behind your body up over your head for a period of time. And sometimes then they'll let you down. And if it doesn't, you don't give your confession, then they'll add weights to you to make it harder. And so this is, again, they're torturing people to get a confession to being Jewish or to get you to confess that someone you know is Jewish. And here's the thing about the Inquisition. The Inquisitioners were paid per confession. I did not know that part. So there's no incentive to let someone go and all the incentive to keep someone and all the people who were Inquisitioned, the state got all their money and gold and stuff. Uh, that... 
politics at their best. But going back to the torture device where they're being hung by their hands behind their back, that was the most common, like Nick said, that I saw. And it was a lot in public, too, like at auto defes, because they didn't always just burn people alive, which they actually did quite frequently. But they just tied me on the back and just had their arms and shoulders get kind of ripped out of their sockets and you just hang there dangling. I, It's like a crucifix, but with rope. Yeah, and this was guilty until proven innocent. Actually, this is just guilty. <laughs> yeah, it's just pretty much guilty. I think point. that I, I read somewhere two sources. One said 2% of people were not tortured or killed in any way, like were let go. Another said like 0. 0.0 something, like 1.9%, like a ridiculous amount. They actually, the Spanish were pretty good at record keeping. Well, it's funny you say that because in about the mid 1500s, they started burning all their books. They did. And you know, because Nick, they 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 kind of figured out maybe this wasn't a good thing. Nick, People were coming. You always know how book burning always turns out well in history, right? That always a good sign. Yeah, generally book burners are on the side of uh, everything that's right. And if I had to, is that what that where you're going? Uh, sure, we'll go with it. We'll go with we'll go with yeah. that one. Uh, but once they kind of run out of Jews and Muslims, Nick, they kind of turned on their own. They went towards protestants and other dominations of faith so the spanish inquisition started off blaming the jews so the monarchy was looking for scapegoats ran out of jews went to muslims ran out of muslims they went now to their own kind of own christian dominations and now they went for the protestants now caveat they did treat the protestants better than the jews and muslims granted it's still torture still burning but far less in numbers of course this is probably because they're running out of people, dude. Yeah, I was <laughs> Population's say, gone down. I was going to say, there's probably a lot more Catholics at this point, so there's probably not that many Protestants. Probably that's why they're not getting affected. And, man, talk about just trying to find any scapegoat. Yeah, and like you said, even if you weren't accused, you would still get tortured, right? So they, you could torture someone in a trial. So you have your people watching, you have a jury, and then you, someone calls you to the witness— and then you get you go on the rack, like the most common one where they stretch your limbs. And then you have to confess to so and so being a secret Jew or a Protestant or not. Yeah, like you said, not even your style of Catholicism. You're just like their neighbor, and then all of a sudden getting tortured. You know, I didn't see Bill at the butcher shop getting some pork. He must be a Jew. Wait, I know Bill. Oh no, I'm gonna be on the rack. And I'm happy you brought up the court system. They had the most clown court I've ever seen, but they try to make it so official. They had a fiscal, which is pretty much a prosecutor and sometimes torturer. They had a califagrando, which is a jury to determine if it's quote unquote Christian enough. Is doing so and so, is that part of the faith? Is sodomy part of the faith? No? Okay, to the rack. And then they had. The I did, did you read the Wikipedia for uh, the Spanish Inquisition? No, I didn't. Okay, it's. It's written by, like, you can tell a Spanish person who feels really bad about the Spanish Inquisition. So they have a sentence on there, and it says something like, um, it talks about anyone who commits sodomy is being tortured or killed or whatever. And it's like, the good news is, or I can't exactly remember, it's like something, the good thing is, if the person, like, if it's an older male and a younger male, like a like a 50-year-old dude and, like, a 13-year-old kid, if the kid was below the age of 12, oftentimes he wasn't tortured. Was he still killed? I don't know. But that's if that's not a good sentence. <laughs> if, if, the, if the kid was getting railed, he didn't get tortured. Yeah, that's, that's great ideology there, Spain. For, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. So if you were a victim of rape, sometimes you wouldn't get tortured. That's what that... That's how that reads. That's that's awful. I didn't even... I, I'm happy I didn't come across that. That makes me sad. Well, and that's, like you said, when we said no one is safe, like this was, they went after kids too. They'd oftentimes torture children to get them to confess on their parents. And they would do uh, what the Spanish called it, but they would put, um, like, entrap the feet of the person or the kid this is what they did to kids and women a lot because they had small feet and they fit in their whatever deals and then put like uh basically a little coals like cooking coals under their feet and it was like a slow painful thing and then they'd add air so it'd get hot it'd blister and then it they'd like back off it'd like kind of heal and then they'd do it again humans are very good at hurting ourselves and our own species and it is quite sickening how 
efficient we are at doing that. But like you said, Nick, you can't escape it. Kids were getting it. Grandparents were getting it. If you were or not, the people they're going after, you're getting it. And even if you left Spain, you were still getting it. Like we mentioned earlier in the podcast, people were traveling in flocks to Portugal, to North Africa, to Italy. And well, unfortunately, the Spanish Inquisition ideas and ideology traveled with them. Very quickly, Portugal and Italy turned into another Spanish Inquisition. They were doing the same thing the Spanish were doing. Now that they had all these Jews, all these Muslims, people were blaming the immigrants and and boom, another Spanish Inquisition, people getting tortured. You (laughs) damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, I forget what Portuguese colony it was, but they started inquisitioning people and then they didn't have anyone to work. And since they're a colony, they're pretty much entirely just like every, like the economy was driven by that. They ran out all their local help because it turns out not a lot of people in Africa were Christians. And uh, then they had to back off on the inquisition because no one would, would work for them. But yeah, it spread to all the colonies. And this was during the age of colonization, like colonies are being set up all over the south like all over africa even into yeah everywhere yeah for for those listening the spanish inquisition technically lasted from 1478 to 1834 so when from da vinci was alive to nearly the american civil war was the spanish inquisition in europe and those ideology when colonized travel along with them so for for nearly 300 ish years the spanish inquisition existed it wasn't a short time in history and it traveled all throughout Europe. And I I would say Spanish Inquisition, I would argue, is mainly European based. Like uh, it went to Africa and the colonies, but I would say it was mainly Southern Europe. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Like you said, so I forget exactly what company or not company countries earlier had inquisitions before Spain did. Spain, obviously the most well-known, obviously the worst, the most horrific. Oh, absolutely. Um, But yeah, so Inquisition been around for a while, but Spain, definitely Southern Europe, that's where most of it happened. Spain and Portugal. Yeah, Portuguese, I would say, are close behind on how ruthless and evil the Spanish were to the Jewish and even Muslims, even though Portugal, I believe, has a high Muslim population at this time. Yeah, Portugal was predominantly Muslim, the Moors, and they, I don't even know how they let that happen. Like, (laughs) everyone's looking for a scapegoat, blame everyone else but yourself. And Nick, this might be a conclusion, but do you know how the Spanish Inquisition finally ended in Europe? I don't know how the Spanish Inquisition completely I'll give, ended. I'll give you a hint. It has to deal with a man who everyone thinks is short and croissants. Ah, uh, the French. Boulevard. That's right, the French. The thing that stopped the Spanish Inquisition in Europe was Napoleon taking over Europe. <laughs> Uh, so the monarchy, which is still existing in Spain at this time, so this is four or five generations after Queen Elizabeth, they realized, oh, we're being invaded. Maybe we shouldn't focus on killing our own people. But Napoleon, being a good general, well, great general at technician, and just took Spain and to start taking all the rest of the European countries, that kind of just put a cease to the Spanish Inquisition because, well, your country is now invaded by a foreign invader. Kind of different priorities at that time. So the French Civil War saved Jews, Muslims, and Christians from the Spanish Inquisition. That's, everything's connected. It is. And I think the moral of this story, much like the moral of most stories, is stop blaming one individual group for a problem. And we see it today. I mean, I'm not going to get into politics here. There's very well-known people who are very anti-Semitic. And it's not an issue if you're not a Jew, but look where it leads. It wasn't just Jews who died in the Spanish Inquisition. Not that that would make it okay, but you, we gotta we gotta cut that out, guys. And we can't exactly count on the French again to pull us out of that situation. No, that's uh, yeah. Well, I, I'd hate to have to rely on the French. <laughs> well, now when something that happens that nobody expects, you now know about it when it does happen. Now I know a little bit about the Spanish Inquisition. And Nick, where can they find us if they want to tell us some more torturous device or? Fun facts about the Spanish Inquisition. You can find us on YouTube and Instagram. Can they find us on Twitter? Cannot find us on Twitter because that's how the Inquisition starts. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram.